Hello, everyone, and, <laughs> and welcome to another episode in this uh, this series with our teacher, Luhan Matus. Hello, Luhan. Hello, lovelies. And hello, Simba and Mark. Lovely. Hello. Today, we are focusing on the topic of personal power. So, um, yeah, let's dive right into it with the obvious question. Uh, Luhan, how would you describe personal power? Hmm. That, that's a really big question. Whew. Okay, the first thing I would say, not to compromise any of your principles. Once you compromise any of your principles, you, you go into a deficit of emotion, your personal power will be diminished greatly. So you, you, don't, you never compromise um, whatever you put on the altar of your perception. Um, personal power is, has been misunderstood, I believe, like personal power is power over people, power over, over circumstances, power physically over somebody else. It's, that's not personal power. Personal power is, is very, very soft, very, very gentle, very, very structured and uh, smoothly um, uh, descends in, and descends into the circumstances and then ascends uh, with the prospect of consciousness. And um, it rarely can be seen, but it can be really, it can be really felt. You know, when I saw you guys um, uh, in your little cafe and you, you went like, you went like this, Sarah, I thought, oh, she's got some personal power. You were so confident, you were so loving, and you were so genuine about what you're projecting. And I saw your power very, very clearly there, because it was a because there was there was nothing hidden behind it. It was it was clear. It was a very, very um, solid message that we love you, and you know, you got all of you. Yeah, it was really lovely. I liked it. <clears throat> yeah, personal power. Uh, not to not to compromise your circumstances in terms of, in terms of what you what you give yourself as a physical goal to do, so that you make sure you fulfill um, the needs of your body, make sure you feel fulfill the needs of your of your of your heartfelt feelings, and um, always keep them in in check to make sure that you talk about what uh, what you realize, so nothing is put into the background because that'll eat your personal power up. Um, not to compromise yourself in any way whatsoever. Always stand by your principles. Yeah. Clean your teeth in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> you said uh, you mentioned not to comprom compromise uh, what you have on the altar of your perception. Uh, mm -hmm. Could you explain what you mean by the altar of your perception? Well, I love you. So, so if I love you, what would I do with you on the altar of my perception? I would, I would give uh, the, you the, the highest quality within myself. Because the highest quality within myself projected towards you only bolsters my own personal power. Mm. And, then, and then to not to have an expectation upon you, upon that, upon that feeling, but to see you in that light. And to see you in the light of, of, um, of my energy in terms of its its pinnacle of its of its uh, its capacity to be, to be in its highest form, and not to compromise that within myself, yeah. So the and this 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 is very sacred. I mean, how many people do you know that that don't get jealous about somebody who's like this or that, or they or they see something and that's uh, that may bring somebody down and they're happy about that you know this this compromises your personal power because the moment you have um, any feeling odd feelings towards somebody else there's odd feelings inside of you and it, it will haunt you like a ghost that's why i call the mind a thief and the and the projection of emotions a ghost because it's not real and to solidify um consciousness um in in the true mechanisms of your realization is to know your realizations and the mechanisms of that will grow exponentially if you stand by uh the the platform that you're that you found yourself upon it gets bigger and bigger and bigger also too with personal power if your energy goes down and you you get a, a low ebb so you understand who you were in comparison to who you are when you just say you you didn't sleep for four days and you're really low and you want to cry and you feel devastated just know that that's not you and you've got to fight against all the negative feelings to know that uh, that whatever's being whatever's being revealed in terms of a hormonal deficiency or just a situation which is challenging you with an obstacle, then you know that's not you, and you won't fall into the trap of that obstacle and become part and parcel of that of that weakness, which is testing your ability to stay firm um, within with absolute fluidity.
Thank you so much. Simba and Mark, do you have do you guys have any questions? Yeah, you kind of answered it already, you know, the difference between personal power and power. I think a lot of people think of power as uh, you gain a momentum or authority over something and personal power looks very different. So yeah. how how would one, like you already highlighted, you know, to be honest and, and truthful to your intentions mm -hmm. and your principle, but how would one lose personal power, would you say, in general? Like if you said lying was one thing or having mm -hmm. negative emotions towards others, but how are we losing personal power in today's society? Well, just say you were physically very, very strong and you used your physical strengths for the wrong things or you had the feeling that your physical strengths was um, very dominant. And the false feeling of that is not really personal power. For the feeling of power in your body in terms of your physical strength, that's not personal power. That's just your the, the reduction of hormones and, and giving you a chance to be good with that strength. Yeah, but if you're not good with that strength and use it for for vanity, then the that the vanity will weaken you. Now, reiterate on your question again. Sorry, Mark. Um, sorry, Simba. <laughs> well, <this> is, <laughs> I got you have no idea how heads. funny this is. <laughs> Here in Thailand, they see us the same. They're two bald guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I take my head off, I'm all bald too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't very clear with the question. It was it was more like okay. How you how you gain personal power is best basically by being authentic and honoring your principle. But what are the things that people might be doing in your everyday life that actually drains that? You know, that actually, yeah, drains that energy from you. You know, like uh, we mentioned gossip, we mentioned not being honest to yourself. But what is it that actually happens that drains your power when you're not okay. being your principles? Okay, if you've got an agreement with your with your spouse and you say, well, I'm going to do this and you do that, and then do, then an agreement's made and you stick by that agreement when your spouse goes down and she can't do it, then you don't use um, uh, the situation. I'm not talking about you and you and uh, Sarah, obviously. Um, to make sure that when when your partner falls, you take you take on their duties and your duties simultaneously, and then vice versa. And but but personal power is that to say that I go down and my wife is is um, not capable of doing what I'm doing. I won't allow her to do it. I'll just get up and do it. Yeah, because it's um you've got to take into consideration everybody's abilities and don't don't um, use their their incapacity to do something because she can't reach things. You know, she's very small, so I have to get re get and reach things for her. But um, that's just one small example. So you do that with love instead of resentment because you because um, the agreement was if I'm down you just take over, but if it's not possible to do that you 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 always give um, so much uh, um, a, a very very big buffer zone so you can't use it against somebody. Yeah, <clears throat> like I, I used to I used to work in um, uh, in a factory many many years ago when I was around about twenty one and uh, they, they, the everybody thought oh this guy's useless uh, he can't do this he can't do that can't read can't write uh, can't can't do math that is everything like this but I'm very practical I get into I get into a into a section and I take everything from that section and study it and know the routine of it take over the routine and then the people who did the iron the day uh, you know the, the testing of everything and then the guy would come who who did this this is perfect. And they pointed at me and they sort of said, no, it couldn't have been him. Yeah. So to believe that somebody can be other than what they are is is to give the, give them grace enough to be who they're really meant to be. That that will sustain that person's personal power. And, uh, and by refusing to even recognize that I did that, was trying to diminish my capacity to be more than what I was. They didn't want to see me that way. So that that is a way to lose personal power as well. But from my side, losing personal power would be, oh, they don't see me the right way. I'm, I'm going to be diminished. No, I never was. <clears throat> because all I did was try and make that uh, that space um, more sacred so that people could, could be actively more clear. Yeah. So then it's connected to the not do yourself and not do other people yeah and judgment and blaming and all of yeah. that 
Like, but if but if somebody if, sorry Sarah but yeah. if somebody has a deficit and you know they've got a deficit the weakness is there is actually their strength, so the <clears throat> the the weakness uh, you take over somebody's inability to do something but you don't guilt them for you doing that but but you'll find that that person has another ability which will couple with you because because you gave them an opportunity uh, not to be guilted they'll find some way to reward you by seeing something good within yourself and then it's cooperative um, freedom in terms of in terms of um not not labeling not labeling people but actually just just seeing that they can't do it so say i can't read and um uh instead of blaming me they can see that i've got an alternate form of intelligence that's that's opposite to reading so the so people see you for who you really are instead of um instead of your performance mm. And I kind of contradict myself there a little bit because performance cannot be working, but uh, but people com must compensate for the for the deficit if they see something that's greater than the deficit, so that they can move you forward um, appropriately. You know, a lot of people that um, that may be in a position where they can't be seen, they're never given the opportunity to be more than what they are, and that that diminishes their personal power, and that's that's a game. It's a very very horrible social game because everybody's got a good quality. Yeah. yeah. I think a a, a follow-up question to that, Luhan, is like, you know, someone someone who's watching this might be asking themselves the question, like, do I have personal power and how do I know? And um, you know, like in, in terms of, of power, you know, if uh, if my cell phone was about to go dead, I would have an indicator light and it would show me that it's turning red now. Okay, you're at 10% power. You know, is is there some kind of a physical indicator that that a person might be able to look at themselves and say, "Oh, my personal power is getting quite low today." Uh, you're talking about physical predisposition in terms of energetics. Um, somebody can be very, very tired or very, very sick and have enormous amount of personal power, but they've got a burden. Yeah. So um, personal power is not really synonymous synonymous with the amount of energy you got, even though even though they couple very very well together energy and um, and activity in terms of ex displaying your personal power. But that's physical personal power. But it's uh, but it's not really syn synonymous with the heart. So you, you can have a lot of personal power and, and not be energetically as strong as somebody else because your realizations are more refined. So it's um, and when you get to a certain a certain stage in development, uh, the physical body uh, then will be become uh, less than what it is because because of the amount of energy going through your body. So then your body uh, then uh, becomes a little bit reduced in terms of the physical uh, physical strength. Yeah. So when when someone becomes more enlightened, their their physical strength diminishes a little bit. Quite, quite a lot, actually, because uh, the energies rise very, very fast. Okay. And, yeah, and and also, too, if anybody has any physical uh, predispositions that weaken them, it's just a test for them to to go through that weakness. And the weakness um, uh, builds personal power through understanding and suffering. You know, personal power's got nothing to do with enjoying yourself, really. It's got to do with taking on the burdens uh, with... with um, Enormous amounts of integrity, yeah. And then the fight for your right to stay in that in that 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 place of integrity. If somebody tries to tear you down by doing the right thing, so. And I guess all of us are going to die one day. So. Yeah. Yeah. When you when you when you when you're passing, it's uh, it's quite extraordinary. If I if I would say when I had the experience when when I. The last time I, I saw the, the fractal anomaly of God it wasn't a physical person; it was a fractal anomaly. Um, I was separated; couldn't even move my body. So the so the the, the power of my body was was totally put aside, and then the uh, the emphasis of um, of some higher spirituality came into came into play, and uh, the, my physical representation of myself was gone completely. There was was in another another dimension. Yeah. So so it's it's a very 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 interesting you can see someone that's like uh that's very very strong very very muscular yeah they've got personal power but is that personal power going to uh, translate into wisdom mm. yeah so i think i think people who are very very strong physically they've got a um a harder journey because of the vanity of that
Yeah, so it may be difficult for people to to look at themselves and determine whether they have personal power. So a, a better indicator would be for them to look at the situations in their life and see if their integrity matches with their actions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, to have, have integrity in the actions. That's where personal power grows. And usually it's something that uh, can't be defined or measured by somebody else. You can't even measure yourself once you measure it, then you diminish your capacity to understand what personal power is because um, being of service is, um, is a statement of personal power, which, which gives you give away the whole prospect of what you need in comparison to whatever, what everybody else um, is um, wanting to, to absorb. Like you, you've got to be there for, for, for other people. Yeah, that's an interesting aspect yeah. of personal power, like com compassion towards others and sharing and, um, you know, t t taking whatever gift you have and passing that on. Yeah, and um, and then then being being adaptive in terms of um, explaining something in in somebody else's wheelhouse. If you have enough per personal power to explain something from somebody else's perspective, so they can get a grasp on on their path. I think Sarah's really good at doing that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when I think about personal power, I think the listening to what you're saying, Aluan, the moments where it came to me the most, I was always doing sports and martial arts and so on, was actually when I got injured, right? I had a lot of my identity connected to my physical body. And when I got injured and I couldn't do the things that I wanted to do, I got some pretty nasty injuries back in my days and yeah something else started to come up right because I couldn't portray myself the way I wanted to in the world with that physical strength like you're saying and then that question started to rise within me like who am I without this what's really there you know why am I here so would you say that that's like a um, common thing that people usually have some kind of crisis to come in contact with their personal power or some kind of injury that gets us out of looking for material objective goals and maybe start more of a hard path. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, I, I've gone through this many times in terms of, um, because, you know, I, I put, I put, I devote maybe six hours in the morning, three hours in the afternoon. So it's nine hours of training. And then I get to get to a point where I, I collapse. And when I collapse, I realize so many different things because I'm not physically active anymore. So within the within two weeks, I, I feel like I grow maybe uh, three lifetimes because I'm realizing so much because all of my energy is not going into my practice, it's going into realizing what my what my practice has done uh, by the fact that I just I can't indulge. Yeah. So so the the longer you fight, and when you have to give up, the more you'll gain. That's what I learned from that, and you learned you learned the same thing. They're learning. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're all still learning. <laughs> we're all still learning, my dear. <laughs> Including me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, no that that's definitely makes a lot of sense. And I've seen yeah. it a lot working with athletes as well. Like um, I was thinking like a lot of sports athletes, they are, they're doing really well and then they get an injury and either they don't come back at all, right? They're out. Or they come yeah. back and people say, what did they do? They're so much better. They're like, they just go to the next level. And I was thinking to myself, that must be the missing link. You know, they do the inner work and they really connect to another driving force of personal power. You know, that there is something else besides the physical body and just looking for a goal, maybe more of a sense of fulfillment. Yeah, sense of fulfillment. There's so much, so many secrets locked inside the physical form. Yeah, it's all inside. So we have to work on the body continually, and then then come to terms with the fact with the with the um, with our biorhythms we're up and down, and then to to continually watch this very very carefully. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and definitely comes across when I work with people like. We're in a phase now, as always in the business, trying to define what we do. And I'm always come back to like, yeah, what is it that you do? And and the closest thing I can come into is body work. And it took me a couple of years to realize this is basically what I'm focusing on, using the physical body for people to realize there's more 
potential within. Um, the potential to open up your um, your evolutionary process through the through the only vehicle of discovery that you got your body. There you go. <laughs> Wow, that was a lot. I have to watch this again. <laughs> I didn't even catch all of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was a big one. <laughs> it's just five words. I think I just talked too quickly. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's great. No, no, no. It was, I heard the words. It was just to take it in. That was the thing. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot what I said now anyway. So oh, don't worry. Go. We got it on video. So. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like yeah. I've, got, I've, got nine book, I've got nine books, but um, before I wrote any of those books, I was always talking and everyone said, you should put that down on paper. And, you know, 20 years later, what did I lose? My gosh, there was a lot, I think. But, you know. All the books are great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I was always thinking about these processes of uh, the old spiritual path, as I call it, was kind of like forsake the body, just meditate and don't eat, and then kind of push yourself out into out of body to gain spirituality. But it looks to me like this is more a heart based path where you bring all the all the parts of yourself to gain spirituality, right? So I kind of call it the old and the new, if that makes sense. Mm, I don't know. Um, I think I think uh, the who changed this was probably Bodhidharma. Bodhidharma. He, he came from India to China and then found the monks uh, all skinny and weak. And he said, "You can't you can't progress like this because you can't make it because you don't have enough internal energy." So he he taught them movements to to strengthen their body so they could sit still. Yeah. Yeah, that's quite a shift, definitely, going from yeah. forsaking the physical body and then only focusing on on meditation. But, I mean, of course, you have no juice if you don't take care of your physical body to actually go that down that yeah. way because it takes a lot that's of funny. energy to travel in and out. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you said something about the you know the body being this this instrument to perceive um you know higher intelligence or inner intelligence and so you know your if, if your body is truly an instrument then um you know you should aim to to have all of the instruments working properly in your body mm. um yeah that's, so, that's true so in in that way you know ha having a, a fit and sound body sounds like a a, a, a aspect of personal power true true they all go together. You have to put them all together um, very, very um, harmoniously. Subdue the mind, even though the mind is um, is heavily is um, is a heavenly process. But the heavenly process is is defined is not is not well defined if your internal dialogue takes up a lot of energy. So when you let the internal dialogue go, then you become voluminous on this area in terms of intuitive intuitive mind, which couples with the heart. You know, and then you've got your fluids in your spine, the fluids in your body, the pumps in your body to get them working to make sure the all your processes of your cerebral spinal fluid will cause enough pressure to go into your brain and then activate the uh, pituitary and pineal axis, which is, a you know, something we all have to do eventually. Get it going. Don't drink um, <clears throat> fluoride. <laughs> Don't calcify that. So um, pineal gland. Yeah, so it so it, it all goes hand in hand, you know. It's um, if somebody's physically strong, they can use their the process of their spirituality to go into physical movements. Someone who's not as strong have to diversify and do something softer. It's, it just depends on the individual, really. But you you just take the 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 better part of that person has to be uh, cherished so that they can grow into who they're really meant to be because we're all here for a reason. Yeah. So besides the physical body of strength, um, can you also harness you know your your other abilities um, into personal power? You know, if your if your body is an instrument, you can tap into your sense of hearing, your sense of feeling, sense of touch, psychic powers, uh, not just the physical body. 
so I'm like I'm thinking that you know if there, if there was a person who was maybe um um like uh paralyzed you know that person could could also have an enormous amount of personal power should should they um focus their attention on the on the other aspects of their body is that true on the on whatever they've got whatever's available if someone's a paraplegic then there's only there's only small options and it depends on whether they're crushed by their circumstance or or take advantage of uh, their immobility so it um yeah and that comes down to to a society what, what will a society do with a person like that and that will define their personal power and their their capacity to care because mm. nobody should be put um on the garbage it's happening all over the world, yeah, and that diminishes uh, people's personal power because they they don't have the capacity to realize that they can care because nobody cares for them. Yeah, S Simba has this great story about this uh, person that he worked with as a personal trainer, um, who who he he helped and, and guided, and uh, I think that person had an, an enormous amount of personal power because of that the way that he was treated. I don't know if you just want to share slightly a little bit about that story, Simba, but I always find it inspiring. Yeah, yeah. And it goes both ways, right? Like the way this person was gave me so much insights to what personal power is because they couldn't really move their arms, barely could move their feet, but they had like a little bicycle that was going around everywhere. And this person used to compete in, in swimming and, and all of these things. And the swim coach to this person was saying, you have to get in and out of the pool on your own. I'm not going to treat you like you have this ability. You're going to have to learn that on your own. And, and the person struggled and scratched because they kind of had to go out of the pool with their head and, you know, was, was, was fighting a lot. And then they got to the competition and they realized no one else was able to get in and out of the pool on their own. So they looked around at the coach like, what's going on? And said, well, look, now you're the first one. Now you're going to lead everyone else right into this because you don't see yourself as someone that's not able to do it. And the person had like a massive realization. And I can't share too much without saying who it is, but they went to a place in society work-wise and social-wise where yeah, it's kind of unheard of, right? That people do that come from that background. And yeah, it was very inspiring. So that led me to work with a lot of people that had disabilities because, you know, it's just a physical body, right? There's something that comes through that physical body. And I think that's really what I learned from this, working with this person, right? That there's just so like a fire, right? And it's like a fire that doesn't diminish just because you can't do things physically. That's beautiful. Yeah. So how would you say that Luban Pai helps us cultivate personal power? Well, it transforms um, your base energies into something quite silky and beautiful. Yeah. And when you feel silky and beautiful, um, the heart opens up. Yeah. Turns your internal dialogue off, um, makes you stronger. And uh, when you get to a certain certain point, uh, you um, in the practice, maybe it'll take about ten years. I'd say for this, uh, it took me around thirty years to find it. But because I know it, I'm teaching it, uh, teaching the low vampire in terms of how I'm standardizing it, so people can find this um, this entity inside of them, which everybody's got inside of them. It's um, it it wavers like um, like out of space, but it's got substance. And then there's something in the in the um, uh, in our general environment uh, that when we go to a certain threshold or frequency, something enters the body to make it strong. So there's something inside the body that's very beautiful, very liquid, very silky, and something outside of the body that enters because uh, you, you do a certain practice. And these are the two things that I found over the years that something comes from the outside to enter you. And I don't quite understand that, but um, but the um, the, in, the internal one is it's very, very clear. Yeah. And so that's, that's like electric. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Elect electric magnetic. Yeah. <laughs> Could be. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. But it's uh, but it's so subtle and so un undefinable in terms of how it happens. Some something just something just happens, and then the body gets bigger, and then later on, they just uh, that that changes, and um, 
yeah it's got to do with it's got to do with windlock apparent you know like it's uh, you do windlock and then and then your body's set up and then you do soft movements and then something that you did in windlock becomes activated when you do the soft movements so it's it's quite a beautiful thing even though i can't quite explain how this occurs but it, it's it's happened it happens to me yeah and to a lot of other people their their, their their body becomes hard like rock all of a sudden yeah when i have people in the office i say you just, you just feel my muscles everything like this I say, how come they're so hard <laughs> <laughs> i says, i don't know <laughs> the practice you know so yeah so it's um so it can have an oscillating effect the this um this sort of power this soft power hard power uh, that appears in the body so it's oscillating so it's it's not um there all the time but it's it's there to generate a feeling of gratitude yeah. you can basically mold your body with the personal power into different shapes and forms mm. uh well, the windlock windlock works on on the physical framework in terms of making the the, the ligaments and tendons and the muscle very very strong, um, and so does the waking the energy body. They, these two couple together, and uh, and then when you do a certain soft movements, these 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 movements uh, then think, then mirror what what has been done in these forms, yeah, and it, it starts to manifest. It doesn't manifest while you're doing uh, windlock. It doesn't manifest while you're doing. Um, Awaken the energy body. But when you when you do another form, then what you've done in those somehow have a momentum to to manifest in the in the other forms. Yeah. So practice, practice, and you learn. Practice, practice. Yeah. Practice, practice. Never stop. Yeah, Luhan, you said you, you practice for six hours in the morning, three hours in the afternoon, and for 30 years you've been doing this for longer. Um, well, maybe 45, maybe around about 45. 45 years. Um, yeah, seriously. Yeah, seriously, 45. Yeah. Maybe 10 years, just, just playing a little bit. I was too young. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, that's a very significant amount of dedication um, so, you know, the, the, the average person who does, let's say, uh, three hours a week, um, what, what can they expect versus what you can achieve? Well, the thing is that, that, um, I, I guess I'm a little bit of a nutter when it comes to this, you know, it's like, um, I, I, I make myself a goal. I don't want to let myself down and, um, uh, and I just do what I, I've got to do. And I've got, I'm, I'm physically, uh, genetically, uh, quite blessed. So, there, are, there, there's, there's also um, the prospect of doing doing things uh, persistently on a very, very um, incremental basis every single day. It's much stronger than doing uh, three hours once a week. Yeah, so it's it's better to train like um, this. I do this too, but I do it um, in a very, very extreme fashion compared to other people. I'm always very consistent with with dipping into what I need to dip into, but what I dip into is way more intense than what uh, somebody else would so so basically if someone uh, puts aside a half an hour to an hour this is enough to wake the body up to to get it hungry to do more you know and uh, you just got to measure what what uh, what your energies uh, are capable of doing and being satisfied with that not measure yourself against another person it, it's the content of a person you know that that builds that that is a character as far as I'm concerned you know it's just just because I can train a lot doesn't mean that um that somebody else has to do exactly the same thing I'm just bent that way you know I'm crazy <laughs> yeah and and plus my system is it demands a lot of me and I I, I haven't uh, passed on to anybody and if I don't uh, keep the basic up and do do everything then um it, it'll be lost yeah, so I have to indulge like this. But I'm starting to standardize everything now. So I can give myself a break and only do one, do or do a form once a week instead of doing it every form every day. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of that, Luhan, like, um, you know, when, whenever you yourself uh, know the system so well, and when you, when you pass this knowledge on to students, uh, do you feel like that 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 the knowledge can sustain time? Like so, after after you pass, will will 
your knowledge of low band pi be lost because you're the only person who can truly understand it completely. And so will, will the future lineage be watered down or are you able to uh, transmit the essence? Oh, absolutely. I've got, I've got um, quite a few students who, who are quite capable actually. Um, as long as they keep the heart open and and be genuinely uh, humble, this is this is the core of love and pie, generosity and and being humble, yeah, and doing your practice and the the way it opens your heart is is quite uh, it's quite extraordinary. So it's a you know every everybody has a has a different expression, and to you know to to uh, res respect that expression is all you can all you can really do. You know, it's a. I'm maybe just a little bit unusual, but um, you know, eventually, I believe um, everybody will wake up to the extent that, um, in terms of the practice and the burden, the practice puts you on you to 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 try to achieve and to work through it to to allow it to wake up inside of you is the, is the main thing. And uh, like I said, it took me thirty years to discover two elements that are. That are now uh, pushing on me pretty hard to to see what what this is, you know. So it may only take someone ten years because uh, when I when I got all the memories that were there, there was an empty frame. I had to fill I had to fill all the interior in with my practice. You you don't get anything for free. You have to do your work. So so what I've discovered through the hard work is um, uh, maybe maybe different to what somebody else will will discover. You know, so it's uh, the the enrichment of the system will will be carried by by the people who dedicate themselves to it as, and then it will dedicate itself to them, and it's 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 a very very big heart process, very soft, um, but very very powerful. You know, yeah, soft and powerful, like Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> But we keep coming back to the heart all the time. Yeah. Would you say that that is the most important work, the heart work? You have to wait for it to come upon you until it uh, until it uh, until it breaks open and cracks cracks every every you know it's like a it, I don't know how to explain it. It's so beautiful. Is it? Is it? I've had enormous, uh, enormous openings on my heart, and then I, it leads me to realize that the, the to sustain that is is quite a task, and to be in that space, um, the voluminous feeling, the opening is is just a calling to to allow you to to actually know what you're searching for, and this 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 has come over and over and over and over again, so the yeah the. This is this is a very very interesting affair because the animated part of our system, our heart, and the earthly process, which is the lower dantine, uh, mm -hmm. the heavenly process, which is the vacuous um, prospect, which has got to do with the automated mind, not the thinking mind. The automated mind looks after the physical form. The automated process, the lower dantine, uh, works with chakras and um, and the nadis. Uh, the animated process. Uh, what I've discovered through through all the years of practice is that when this animation opens up. Then uh, there's a there are two feeding tubes that go to both 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 um, principles of heaven and earth. The animation is is the most powerful element. Um, but in, but in a lot of systems and and in my system, I said don't don't really concentrate on the heart. Let it open up of its own accord and surprise you. And then gravitate towards things which uh, which nourish uh, this ability to be open. Yeah. But also to to sustain action which shows shows you where you should be when the when the heart uh, uh, the, goes very voluminous and then comes a little bit smaller remember what you did and who you were when you when that was voluminous um, stay firm with what you know to be true even though the feeling uh, doesn't accompany you um, it is the devotion to that realization which is the most important thing in part of as in terms of the animated process because it's a uh, the, the doors of heaven open up when this opens. It's a very, very beautiful feeling, very angelic. Yeah. Is that what is called the rapture of the heart? Mm. Mm. Yes. Yeah. And to embrace and to love um, everybody that you that you consider um, cherished in your life. Yeah. 
So what happens with the heart if we're being attacked and like weaponized? It's like if if that happens to me, it can take me days to get over and I can feel that my heart might want to close a little bit. It's like a, there's a protection that wants to come in and that there's almost it's 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 almost like a there's one energy that that how to say that wants to close and one that is um it's it's like an expansion and a contraction at the same time which is it's it, it yeah. feels like there's a lot going on when those things happen because it, it's not, mm. it's like a growth process at the same time exactly Exactly. The oscillation of your circumstances are, are to test you in terms of your fortitude. Mm. Because no matter what, you can't close the doors once they're open. Mm. Yeah, you just have to bear bear witness to, to what uh, what reveals itself internally and, and just know uh, that, that there are a lot of people on the planet that need to evolve away from the destructive uh, mechanisms of communication. You know, this is a this is a big thing. It's it's huge because there's there's not enough of us uh, yet. And if we can if we can sustain the injury, then the the war will be um, for our, our sovereign right to be loving and open. Will will get stronger and stronger. And if not. Then we still know where the where the where the gates are and where the doorbell is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You talked about waiting for something to come to you. And yeah, that's that's really interesting in terms of everything that I saw when I started working with personal development in psychology was like goals. You have to fight for it. You have to put up a goal and you have to put in all of this effort to reach there. But what I feel you saying is do the practice and wait for it to come to you. And you don't know when it comes to you and you kind of forsake that whole path of wanting to and pursuing something because you can't really pursue it because then you're not open to realize what's, what's actually coming your way. Yeah, that's an interesting prospect. You have to wait for. There's there are certain there are certain things that have to be, I guess, um, dissolved, like your karmic your karmic residue of the feelings which you must which you've got to work through and and try not to uh, be entangled with anymore. That's a process. So uh, as um, as we progress, we I, I know exactly what I want, but I don't focus obsessively on it because it it becomes too hardened. And then I can be disappointed and impatient. So it's um, it's it's really nice to wait. But twenty years ago, I would have wouldn't have said that. <laughs> twenty years ago, I would have said, "I want this now," you know. So, you know, it's uh, it just just depends on on everybody's journey, uh, what they achieve, and I, and I believe the only thing that of, of the really importance is to achieve. Um, you know, true friendship, uh, true companionship with with human beings. Yeah, you know? I mean, like 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 I said before, it's um, everybody has a has a different quality, and everybody has already arrived on that quality. They just got to wake up to that particular quality, and a goal is fine. You want a Porsche? It's okay. You want a house? It's okay. You want a Harley Davidson? It's okay. Um, you know, just just don't drive it into the property. Just leave it five miles down the road and walk home. Because <laughs> 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 it's too noisy. <laughs> yes, it is yeah. too noisy. <laughs> it is too noisy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, so, gosh, that was something Mark told me. He said, oh, don't you bring a Harley Davidson? It's too noisy. You, you're right. It's too noisy, but um, yeah, I don't, I've lost my drift now. But um, I was teasing Mark about how I love Harley Davidson's too, big bikes. But um, yeah, you got to you got to fit in. But what was I saying, Sarah? 
I don't know. <laughs> yeah. We were talking about goals and waiting oh, yeah. and, and kind of like uh, it's okay to have goals, but don't get yeah. fixated on the goals because you lose all the things that might come to you, right? Like you're not open to something new appearing into your life if you're fixating on how it should look like. Yeah, yeah. Don't become, don't become too hard and rigid because you're, you're, you'll miss something very soft and very beautiful that's right next to you. I love how you said that the the relationship with other people and the communal with other people is the most important thing to really to really harness, like to to cultivate the the friendships and the the closeness. And I I, I really love that. It feels like uh, it's really the joy of it. Bring it's so simple and. I don't know, it just feels like everything else falls off when that's happening. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you that's have really a noisy true. one or a non-noisy <laughs> bike. Poor <laughs> 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 Mark. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, it's really true. It's really true. Uh, you've got to, you've really got to find the best in everybody and and travel upon that. Mm -hmm. And then if you if something if something appears, then you you diligently assist um, everybody to see what needs to be seen, mm -hmm. without judgment or without um, ridicule. Yeah. Because every everything matters in terms of everybody's perception. Mm -hmm. But it's a you know it says what what do we do collectively? I mean that's that's the big thing. What do we do collectively? Because we've been we've been instructed from the from the world edifices that the collective um, doesn't really matter. It's only the it's only what you want that matters. But um, yeah, if what if what we if what we want is somebody else to be cared for and loved, then that's that's more important than being wanting to be cared for and loved. But you will be cared for and loved if you if you project that towards other people. So you you got to give what you want. <laughs> Mark, I know you have a question about the the artist oh, yeah. and the art. Oh yeah, yeah. So it, I mean, it's it's not necessarily re um, related to personal power, but it's a question that that we have had. Um, so like, if 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 an artist has a has a body of work, like a a painter or a musician or a a, 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 a an actor, but then you know later we find out that the artist was uh, secretly doing something really bad, something awful. Um, is it possible to separate the art from the artist and enjoy the art, even though you know the artist was corrupt? That's an interesting question. Do you feel guilty about something? No, no, no. We're, it, it, it was just, it's, it's, it's kind of been a philosophical question that we've had. <laughs> You know, like I don't feel guilty. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that's that's an interesting question. Why would someone make something beautiful and make something ugly secretly? I mean, that's that's kind of that that sounds like the dynamics of our our planetary situation at the moment. Pretending to be good when you've got um, unwholesome feelings in the background. I mean, how can those possibly fit together? Well, that's what it, it's it's a conundrum. You know, because you might you know, really feel passionately strong. Let's just use the example of Michael Jackson, regardless of whether we know whether or not he actually did something corrupt or not. Philosophically, we can ask this question. People really like the music of Michael Jackson. They feel really moved by his music and his artistry and his appearance. But then if we find out that, you know, he was doing something horrible in his private life, does his actions in his private life taint our ability to enjoy his artistry? Okay, well, they're assumptions, really, and only the person, only the person expressing um, whatever they're doing, will know that completely because it's it's something we don't know absolutely whether the whether the force of the world was was upon him and 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 put him into a frame which has got nothing to do with what he was really doing. It's it may have to do with what he was really doing in terms of in terms of wanting his label, so that maybe corrupt people that do um, project onto him what they were doing. 
So, and then said he was doing this when actually they were doing that and all he wanted to do was wanted his label. I don't know. But that that's that's like a what if it may be. I mean, we what we don't know, we can't assume we know unless we really know it. So we should leave it alone and unless we really know what's going on. You know, so so it's um I don't know. I don't think those two those two can go together. I don't think there's there's a tortured person that can be really evil and they'd be really nice. I don't think that's possible. You're either one or the other. Yeah. What if it's a situation so, yeah. in which you you know the artist personally and the artist has has attacked you personally, uh, and you know that it was an attack? Does that then well, change then, your well, reference point to their art? Yeah, of course it would. You wouldn't see anything beauty beautiful in it because because you're tainted by the behavioral patterns of the person who put something on the canvas and pretend to be something they're not. Yeah. So then your your personal experience isn't what if it may be, it's a reality. Yeah. And then you then you'll ask yourself the question, how can this be possible to make something beautiful? Yet you're so ugly. That's the question. You know? That's that's the difficult yeah. question to answer. Well, I don't know. That's 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 a real conundrum, even even to talk about that, because um, I mean, really, how could you how could that person live with themselves? Because I, I couldn't live with myself being being split in two like this. That doesn't feel like a possible doesn't feel like a possibility for me, but but maybe people have the possibility of, of pretending they're something they're not. They may be quite talented. They've, they've practiced something. They've got the muscle memory and everything like that. That doesn't mean that they that they've transformed their life because they've done something through repetition. Obviously, if if you've been hurt, yeah, you know, so you you're tainted that way. So um, that's a clear clear impression that's left inside of your body that you know you can't be around that person because you know there's a contradiction, and if that contradiction has hurt you, then you're, that contradiction is showing you the truth. Yeah, whether anybody else can see it. Okay. And will you have the willpower not to not to spread that disease to other people and allow them to try and change? That's the conundrum. Yeah. Will you become an alternate version of that person's that that particular person's wickedness upon you? Yeah, that's a that's a good a good insight. But at the yeah. same time, holding them to their highest regard and uh, allowing mm. them to grow and change and yeah, and if they do, you forgive and move on. Yeah, then you don't hold it them did. to anything that they've done in the past. Yeah. But it may not be possible to be around that person. No. I mean, it's all That's about the thing. Yeah. what happens and how they deal with it and how they choose to move forward. Yeah. yeah. So if they've hurt you, you just withdraw. Yeah. Yeah. Allow them to live their own life and pull your eyes away from them because the, the, they may cause uh, resentment and that's that will diminish your path. So how would that resentment diminish my path or because because being resentful towards another person um you're not really you've got that resentment within yourself mm. so the self self def, def, the self definition in terms of that is very very strong so if, so if if that exists within you then they've they've given you a prominent test to to see that there's a corresponding point of um of familiarity between the two even though their their characteristics are slightly different still exists inside of you. So they're, they're giving you an opportunity to see there's something that needs to be changed within us. Yeah. And how would it affect me if that person was holding resentment towards me? Oh, probably affect you very, very strongly because you're very loving. And then you have to you have to work through that through that burden and, and give your husband a hug and, and cry in his arms and say, I can't I can't handle this. It's it's over it's overrun me, and you'll fall in his arms and cry, and then you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. And then you the guy has to sell his house and move away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> am I on, am I on the target or not? Mm -hmm. <laughs> No, <laughs> of course not. Okay. The, yeah. Mark, did you did you do you feel satisfied with the, or do you have any follow up questions? I, I do have one follow up question, but I think I've I've kind of already answered it in my mind. But I just want to bring it out for the for everyone else. You know, okay. So in this scenario with this artist who may have 
uh, intentionally hurt us. Um, if I had a piece of that person's artwork hanging on my wall and I previously found it to be beautiful, and now I look at that artwork and I wonder, is it as beautiful as I had once thought it was? Um, and I question maybe this artwork doesn't belong on my wall anymore, or can I still see the beauty in which I, I saw before? I take it back to him and say, um, I appreciate it. Yeah. But I can't have it hanging on my wall as same as I can't have you hanging on my chest. Okay. Yeah. That's to be that's, honest, to, to be honest. Yeah. That's kind of the answer that I was feeling in myself. So thank yeah. you. Yeah. And forgive them. That's the main thing. Forgive them. But you you can't be constantly reminded. If that if that reminds you, then put it aside and put something beautiful up there. Beautiful up there. Put a picture of your of your wife. You can do that. Yeah, change the scenery. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That, that 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 does it for me. An answer complete. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it, it even if somebody does something, there's a there's a form, uh, like an old form of um, behavior, which was you shun somebody out of the community because they're dangerous, because they 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 bring a certain amount of uh, discomfort and a certain amount of disharmony. And the way that the in the old world they used to deal with this was to shun the person out so they're not welcome. Um, and a person has um, certain there's only a certain amount of times you can call wolf. Until until you can't believe anything that the person says anymore, and they shun themselves by by that. So so the first the first the first area of shunning is that I can't welcome you into the into the hallways of my heart because you you keep um, you know slamming the doors and, and breaking things. So then you then you shun a certain distance and say, well, I'll, I'll give you an opportunity to change, but you you can't enter the the the, the chambers of my heart. And then slowly, slowly, that shunning has to get bigger and bigger. And if the person can't uh, can't change, because they they will drag you down into into a poisoned well that they that they've um, slowly dripped uh, their intentions into. You can't drink from it anymore. Yeah, but you, you let them live their life, and that's that's a that's a that's very sad actually. Yeah, when you really look at it, it's very sad for them, really, because they're so lost. But then again, you can be lost in the in the mayhem of of ill intent. That's yeah. that, that's worse because there's many people being lost. Yeah. yeah there's a uh, Ram Dass's guru Maharaji. He he would tell people you you can shut people out of your house, but don't shut them out of your heart. So mm -hmm. is is that that's true? It. That even even though you know we we may want to close the door on a particular person, we we can close the door to our house, but not to our heart. Yeah, that's right. That's true. But you you got to consider the frequency which which is which which is generated through distrust, and this this is like a it's like a, a poison. So, yeah, yeah. Do you Everybody's feel got like... really sad? <laughs> <laughs> this subject. Yeah. So on a on a lighter note, do you feel like? Um... People can be forgiven and 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 like fully forgiven and and if you, the 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 feeling that I get is like someone coming back and like everything seals again in the trust. I mean that's possible, right? Yeah, well, you know, as Doctor Phil says, it takes one thousand one thousand I love you to to be generated bef before someone forgives for a um I hate you, you know so. I despise you or something like this. So it takes a, a lot of I love yous and a lot of um, not repeating the same behavior for people to uh, to put aside their memory of the, of the great uh, disservice that's been done. Yeah. Yeah, and that can only be uh, measured in the level of feeling, right? So when you yeah, feel like yeah. it's healed, it's yeah. healed. Yeah, that's, that's true. As long as there's the repetitious... Um, um, sounding of that uh, disappears, then you you start to listen for something different, because it's uh, the the song being sung or the the repetitious noise has kind of stopped, and you go, okay, what's happening here? They've changed, mm. and then you then you slowly learn to appreciate them again. Yeah, but that's up to that person. It is. Yeah. 
but it still feels like the the level of forgiveness can be very strong like very there's a lot that is the 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 heart is has the ability to forgive the yeah the ability the heart's ability to to heal and forgive is very very strong it's very strong yeah but we have to be wise to know um whether the whether the na that nature of that particular person is going to change so we have to be very, very careful with this area of our evolutionary process because it can get buried in feelings which are unnecessary. Yeah, and yeah. you're right. Yeah, the, the, we have a, a great capacity for, to forgive, but we've got to we've we've got to be given signs that the repetitious nature of whatever hurt uh, that particular perspective in the first place doesn't happen anymore. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh it feels like the the post that you shared the uh, just the other day like yesterday or the day before when it, i mm. rem don't remember exactly what it said but to be suspicious and what was the other word curious simultaneously open <laughs> yeah. simultaneously. always keep watching be as gentle yeah. as lamb and as, and as wise as I, as a be as be as wise as a serpent serpent and gent gentle as a lamb mm. yeah same time watch very very carefully but be tender and, and kind in the meantime. Mm. Yep. I love that. Quite a yeah. thing, actually, when, when that happens. I mean, when you feel an attack like that, when you don't attack, project back, right? So I come from martial mm -hmm. arts, so that was my thing, you know, like you do something back. But when you don't attack back, that was, that was quite a thing that I noticed. Like I actually feel what's going on inside a person. Right. And that's what brought mm -hmm. me down in, in this case, like took a couple of days because it's like a piece of that emotion from that person was left inside of me and I can start to feel things. And then I know, cause like in situations, this has happened more than once. Right. So it's not a particular situation, but can really feel what that person is going through. Right, like they leave something inside of me, and and that was, it's quite a challenge sometimes to really work through that because it's like picking up an emotions that I never had and and don't really have anything to to relate to and start to work through something that, yeah, my body doesn't really have a concept of. Right, like if someone been through a car crash and they're super afraid of cars, and I have a collision with this person, and all of a sudden I start to feel afraid of cars and I go like that's so strange I don't have a concept of being afraid of cars so it is beautiful in that sense too I get to learn something I get to work through something that wasn't mine but it's also super challenging I can feel at times like wow why did I pick up that <laughs> I have enough of my own stuff <laughs> I don't need to really pick up other people's stuff as well well I, I guess that's that's part of um growing up as, as a human being, not growing up as like your age or anything like that, but growing up as a human human being is to see somebody's faults and know that they're caught within the within the very very limited uh, parameters of of um, of their faults and not not being able to see that they're captured by their repetitious nature. And to, to actually see somebody else's repetitious nature is is not a burden; it's it's a gift, and it allows you to forgive them a little bit because you can see that they 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 lost uh, they lost their way. So, so you've hit upon the most beautiful part of this conversation. Because that's what needs to be done with the artist. Is to forgive them because you understand that uh, you can see their limitations. You understand why the limitations are there, and um, but you don't, you you don't do that yourself. So they've given you a very, very valuable lesson. So you you don't have to incarnate, incarnate one more time and do what they do to understand. So the entanglement is enrichment in that case. I love that. I love that. <laughs> that, that, that when it gets challenging, it just turns into <laughs> something. Yeah, I love it. Because when it yeah, happens so in the moment, it's it's super difficult and it's, you know, all these, everything coming up and like, oh, why is this happening? And what does this mean? And, da, 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 da. and then it turns into a massive potential growth and things mm -hmm. shift and opening up and new pathways and like, it's amazing. We should write a book. We should write a book about this. <laughs> you do all these interviews and then then take out all the pertinent points and pointy end points and then then you got to step one step two step three step four and everything like that and that's that's how books are written that's how philosophy is developed 
by realization. Yeah. Put it down on paper and see see how how everybody else interprets it. Good idea. I can see wonderful things coming from this. That's very good. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I love it. That's a fantastic idea. It is. Get writing. <laughs> 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 Don't know what you started, Luan. <laughs> Have a book by next week. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's good to have a. It's good to have um, goals and 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 put your love and your 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 cherished realization down on paper. And if they are put down properly, they'll they'll transform in front of everybody's eyes. Mm. They won't be linear. I mean, we've been talking about writing a book. Especially you and my, me, Mark, we've talked about that a lot. Yeah, I feel like I feel like there's, some, there's, some, there's several books in in motion here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do it. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's a beautiful process. Very challenging though. The editing is crazy. You have to go through the book maybe twenty or thirty times. You know, to find out double up of words, words that are missing and everything like this, it's it's really big. It's really mm. big. But it's it's um it, it generates um a certain amount of fortitude and and confidence because you've got okay, that's not a, that's not complete. We have to finish that. And and you'll you'll know how to finish it. Yeah. Because you'll see you'll see the end the end uh, the end goal because uh, you're looking at something which is which uh which you put together is like yin yang, you're oh, there's something missing there, let's add this in. Yeah, the process of writing books is is very beautiful, actually. Looking well, I feel it. that it's, I feel it's time consuming. That it takes a lot of time. It does. It does. Yeah. Unless you're unless you're a rusher like me and get I got the power of emptiness uh, done in four months. Can you believe it? Wow. You know so. Yeah. But I had I had five I had five people with me doing it together. Mm -hmm. So I was dictating and then. And, and um, Janina was doing it. Naomi was doing something else. Liz was doing something else. You know, so I think there was about four or five people in it, in on it. So we got it done very, very quick. So if everybody has a little part part to play, then it can happen really quick. It doesn't have to be two, three years to write a book like everybody says. Take five years to write that. So what? You know. And then you can combine the 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 communal the communion uh, like writing it together. And do something together. Yeah. Have fun along the way. Yeah. Yeah. Make a philosophy for your um for your center mm. that revolves around um the um you can you can just actually this is this is who we are and this is what we what our goals are. Mm. Yeah, it's a good idea. That's a great Use idea. Use it. Yeah. Because because books are like a glorified business card, really. You read that, you go, oh, that's good. <laughs> it is truly. Yeah. Surely it's a glorified business card. It actually, it um, it's it's the window. It's the window to your to your soul, really. And then Sarah can go on a on a global book tour, speaking and and signing books. Yeah, I don't think books make money a lot of money, <laughs> but uh, you'd have to be a bestseller for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Slowly but surely. Slowly but surely. It'll yes. happen. Yeah. All right, guys, do you have any final questions? I do not. Not. Luan, do you have any final questions? No, not really. <laughs> right. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for this third um, episode in the in this series. So we have one more. And thank you so much for tuning in and thank you everyone for um, a great episode. Thank you yes, so much. Lovely. Yes, fantastic. Lots of love guys. Lots of love. <laughs>